Okay. Well, considering we're starting a, a new year and uh, some of us have been going through, we all have ups and downs in our lives. And uh, um, a friend of mine, a Rotarian in um, South Africa, sent this uh, poem to me. And I th just thought I'd share it with all of you today. Um, Patience visited me and it reminded me that good things take time to come to fruition and grow slowly and stably. Peace visited me and it reminded me that I may remain calm through storms of life, regardless of the chaos around me. Hope visited me and it reminded me that me that better times lay ahead and it would always be there to guide and uplift me. Humility visited me and it reminded me that I may achieve it, not by trying to shrink myself and make myself less, but by focusing on serving the world and uplifting those around me. Kindness visited me and it reminded me to be more gentle, forgiving and compassionate toward myself and those around me. And love visited me and it reminded me that I need not search for it in others it lies within me. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any guests or visiting Rotarians? Okay. Uh, we have some announcements. Um, earlier today, uh, Steve Day had organized with Sean McMillan uh, an opportunity for us to walk through some of the homeless camps and specifically on Cotner Avenue, south of Santa Monica Boulevard. And um, John O'Keefe was there. Uh, ben Fisher was there. Myself and Steve. And... Um, it's quite an eye-opening experience. It may not fit with your perspective of what you anticipate when you walk in that type of environment. Um, Steve and John, I'd like to get your thoughts on your observations and um, what Sean McMillan is attempting to put together and the people who uh, we met uh, that do this on a daily basis, um, the showers that are set up, the clothing. Uh, John, why don't you start? Okay. Um, this is a project, uh, a joint project for uh, Westwood Village Rotary. Excuse me, my voice is a little bad today. Westwood Village Rotary and... Uh, and West LA Homeless, which is a nonprofit organization that I'm on the board of. And uh, we've been thinking for some time about wanting to do some cleanup around these, uh, around these homeless encampments. And that seemed to fit in very well with what Steve Day thought was an outreach program for us at our Rotary. So we had uh, three of our board members from West LA Homeless there this morning along with, I think it was four or five of us from the from the Rotary, and we walked up and down several blocks. And, uh, and the food, uh, some, uh, uh, not food, but uh, some clothing that was uh, provided also. But anyway, um, I think it's a great project for both of us because there's a need there, and both of us would like to get a little more uh, publicity about what we're doing in our home communities about something that's a very, very serious problem. So that's about all I can think of to say right now. Well, Chris, uh, Steve, if you want me to say anything more, I'll be glad to. Uh, well, thanks, John. Uh, yeah, it was really um, an eye-opener. Um, there is opportunity, <coughs> excuse me for that. The mailman must be here. Anyway, there's, there's definite opportunity for us to, um, to do a joint project with West LA Homeless. Uh, there is a lot of homeless in, along that road, uh, along, along Cotner, 
and there is a need for cleanup. So we're envisioning um, maybe a pro maybe that would be our first area. And again, we're, we're pointing for our uh, first um, event, if you will, our first four-way foray into helping clean up uh, our community that along Cotner, uh, Cotner. Um, and uh, that would be on this, uh, January 28th. That's our tentative date. Um, we're not ready to start signing people up, but please keep it in mind. See if that's something that you would be interested in participating would be from nine. Right now we're thinking nine o'clock to 12 o'clock Saturday morning, January 28th. Involve family, friends, fellow Rotarians from other clubs. We're thinking our initial will be initial um, foray will be 10 to 20 people. Uh, Sean um, provided us with a lot of good information. He's done. He was there today as well. And he provided us information on his communication with the city of Los Angeles, LA Sanitation, Beautify LA, uh, LA City, uh, more specifically the city council person. Um, they've provided us good insight about what we can and cannot do. We understand that there's certain limitations on how close we can come to the actual um, homes, if you will, of the homeless individuals. Uh, we're supposed to keep away by about 50 feet. Um, LA sanitation will be very cooperative. Either we're going to use plastic bags that we will set aside in a specific area, which they will come and pick up on Monday, or we'll actually even have a full size dumpster there that will be used to put the items in. And there's a lot of stuff that could be easily picked up along Cotner and, uh, you know, and maybe make their, 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 their dire situation maybe a little bit better by seeing that somebody in this community cares. Um, let's see now. What a, oh, a LA Beautify, it's, a, it's also a city department, would be a, an organization that quite possibly will provide us with supplies. The supplies, I mean, vests and bags and pickers. Pickers are the devices where you stand and you pick items up off the ground. Brooms, um, other Gloves. items that we... Gloves, yes, gloves. Thank you, Chris. Um, masks, we're going to strongly recommend everyone wear masks that day. So uh, I really think this is going to be a very impactful program for us, uh, whether we do it on that street every month or whether we branch out. We don't know yet. This is really somewhat of, it is a pilot program for us, this first go uh, uh, going out onto Cotton Earth. That's where it is. I, mean, I I think we're kind of leaning towards that, but that's um, probably where it's going to be. So my comments to everyone is to please begin to think, or maybe you already have, which I hope, to participate. Rotarians participate. Rotarians, please invite friends and family. I'm inviting my son, Jeff. Uh, I know Ben has already talked with his um, his daughter and son-in-law or son-in-law, son and daughter-in-law, I don't remember, and they're going to participate. And so we're hoping to get maybe 20 people. And again, as I've discussed previously, one of our goals besides providing community service and helping the homeless clean up their encampment, or at least the areas near their encampments, is also to begin introducing what we do as Rotarians to individuals in our community who might be interested in becoming part of an impact club. So there's it's, 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 there's two reasons, but the primary reason at this point is just to do good service and to help out these individuals or who live in a dire situation with a little bit of assistance. And uh, <laughs> and we actually communicated with uh, several homeless people ourselves today. And it was, you know, it was nice just to be able to say, hi, how are you? And um, it, it was really kind of, it was very impactful, let me tell you. So I don't know if there's anything else I should bring up, Chris. Yeah, Steve, talk about um, what Margaret was doing. Oh yeah, one of one of um, one of the uh, West LA homeless uh, member board members, Margaret. I don't know her full name. Uh, she's Margaret a retired Gillespie. Margaret, Margaret Gillespie. Gillespie. Yes, thank you, John. And she's a retired attorney. And what she does is she sets up a table. I think she coordinates it on Thursday when the showers are there. There's two showers, by the way, with bathroom facilities as well. And it comes there. It's it's towed in, towed out uh, every Thursday. But anyway, Margaret sets up a table and she gives away clothing. She gives away um, personal hygiene items. She gives, uh, she gives away nail clippers and um, a whole range of items, personal, you know, personal need items. And so and she's a very dynamic person. And I mentioned to John, 
Hey, John, I think she'd make a great Rotarian. John goes, yeah, I think you're right. You're exactly right. <laughs> But anyway, so so Margaret is very uh, is a very active board member for West LA Homeless, as John and John is. So um, yeah, it, it's it's it, it really was quite neat to see all these different organizations coming together. Um, West LA Homeless, Rotary, uh, people concerned. Some of their caseworkers were there. John informed me that uh, West LA Home Homeless subcontract some of their. Um, needs to uh, West uh, people concerned, which is also a not-for-profit servicing the homeless community in West Los Angeles. I think throughout you know throughout Los Angeles. But anyway, it, it was. Let me tell you guys, you, you left there somewhat in awe, awe of the horrible conditions these people li live in, but also in awe that you know what there's something we can do. And so I'm I'm real excited uh, as. Um, I think Sean said to, to us as we were walking back, he says, I have an itch to start picking stuff up now. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, okay, let's start now. <laughs> Steve, one more thought. Uh -huh. Talk about um, the trash that we're going to pick up. It's not going to be the clothing. We're not going to go into um, and disturb the occupants there. Tell them what we're, how we're going to uh, address that. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, already the uh, the three caseworkers, and I don't remember their names, but they Felix. were- Felix. Pardon me? Felix. Felix, well, he was the lead, he was the lead. There's three of them, Audrey, I think, or no, Diamond. No, Diamond. Diamond, Diamond yeah, Diamond. Diamond. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, were, they, were, they were very impressive. They And they were the caseworkers. And so they were actually starting to inform the homeless along Cotner there. And there probably was 12, 15 vehicles and, and campsites along there already but anyway we're gonna they were they were informing them that we were planning on coming on the 28th and for them to ahead of our arrival is to pull it pull their stuff that they want to dispose of out of it because again we can't get too close to them we have to stay about 50 feet away but designate a spot or a length of spot you know maybe along the side of the opposite side of the road where right now there is no homeless um, encampments and put their stuff in there and so then we can come through there with our pickers and our bags and wearing our gloves and masks and whatever <laughs> and, and clean that all up. We easily could spend the three hours we're in two to three hours we're envisioning with 20 people cleaning up stuff there. There was just so much stuff, guys. There's just so much stuff. And I honestly I think we could we can really do some good. What we're planning on doing is providing donuts and coffee, not just for the volunteers, but for the homeless who who wish to come over and, and 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 have a cup of coffee and a donut. So we're going to provide that. And uh, again, I, I think it's going to be a, something that we'll, we'll be very proud of. Um, and if this is and I'm praying and hoping that this is the first of many um, forays out into the community to help provide assistance to these people who just live in horrible, um, dire conditions. Steve, who's going to pick up the trash? L.A. Sanitation. Uh, as I mentioned, LA Sanitation, Sean's already in, in communication with them. There's no cost to us, no cost to West LA Homeless. We just have to inform them where we have designated the bags, if that's the, what, the route we're going, or the dumpster, or maybe we can do both. There's no reason maybe we can't do both. Have a dumpster there and also use plastic, black, you know, the big heavy duty plastic bags and tell them we, we've left them on Missouri between Cotner and... Uh, Pontius and come and get it on Monday and they're going to come and get it. It just can't get too close to the homeless. I mean, they, 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 they want it separated out from there. So there's no question that this stuff is refuge. All right. Just one last comment, comment about how they're, um, how they sign up to take showers and your impression of what you saw. Yeah. Um, they, every Thursday they bring in um, this, this, um, this, this, um, trailer that has two showers in it and toilet facility. And so um, the, the individuals come over and sign up. They're, they're there from like, I think, nine in the morning to around three in the afternoon. The organization provides us every Thursday. And they come out, the, the homeless come over and say, I'd like a shower. And they have 15 minutes. And there's a sink, a toilet, and a shower in there. And they can shave they can, they can, if, if they're men, they can shave or whatever. Um, they can, they can shave, they can deal, uh, deal with whatever they need. And they got 15 minutes and an individual is there kind of overseas it to make sure everything runs according to oil. <laughs> so if any, any hanky panky, anything, he, he'll, 
they'll throw him out. <laughs> and I believe him. He's a big guy. He looked like a former lineman for uh, an NFL team. Anyway, um, and they have, oh, they provide them with toothpaste, toothbrushes, um, soap and shampoos, towels afterwards. So it's really quite an impressive and um, set up to have. And they do, again, they do that every Thursday. Okay. Any questions? Gordon, you had a question previously? I was just a couple of things. Uh, I heard the name Sean McMillan, and I guess it's been slightly clarified, but who is he? Not the one I thought you were referring to initially. And two, uh, have we uh, thought about including or inviting or reaching out to our rotor actors, one of whom is with us today? Uh, about whether they might be interested in participating. Of course. Uh, we have not yet reached out to them, but I'm so happy. Um, who's on? Is it? Sarah Long. Oh, okay. Hi, Sarah. Yeah, um, we'd be very happy to get their involvement. Again, we're um, we're thinking 10 to 20 people. And uh, if the rotor actors wish to get involved, I think that would be awesome. As far as the first question, Gordon, I'll let John answer that. Yeah, Sean is the co-founder and chairman of the board and CEO. Uh-oh, John, you look, froze up. Okay. Oh, as John was saying, he's the CEO, executive director of Home The West nonprofit Homes. that was founded here, we'd like to have him come back and speak again. Uh, but that's Sean. He's very involved <laughs> in the homeless issue politically in Los Angeles uh, City and County. Yeah, he's very impressive. He spoke to the club, Gordon, maybe uh, six months or so ago yeah, yeah. and gave us a program about the organization. And he was at he was at Rotary last week because last week after our meeting, we had a planning meeting for this. And one of the one of our takeaways was that we want we as in uh, Chris and John and Ben and I wanted to walk the street to see what we're dealing with, see what we're going to confront. So yeah, Sean is, you know, as we all know, Sean McMillan is a name that means a lot to us Rotarians. And, uh, but anyway, Sean McMillan of West LA Homeless is an impressive, impressive individual. Yeah. And so, I, he, and he's well organized, he's well connected. One to item, he's working very hard on getting our new city council person, Katie Yaroslavsky, was her first name Katie? Yaroslavsky, that's correct, yeah. Yeah, and to be there. And, and uh, Ben, through his connections, which sound, like a possibility is actually inviting the mayor to attend. And so it could, this thing really could blossom, but we don't want to get ahead of our skis. We want to, we want to do this right. We want to do it so that it's sustainable. And so we're thinking, you know, well, everything plays out the way we think having 20 people there working in somewhat in teams. I think we can accomplish a lot that Saturday morning. So I guess that's it. But so Again, I want all of us to participate. If it means if you can't be there, maybe you can invite a family member to be there. Or if you can't physically participate, you can still come and pass out coffee or just be in community with us. So I really want a big group there. Yeah. Mark. Uh, Steve, for the windmill, date and time and where? We're envisioning Mark uh, nine to nine to twelve Saturday, January twenty eighth. Okay. Also, uh, Sarah put a, a chat message in. Is if you can get her the information today or soon, she will bring it to the board. Okay, I'm sweet. Uh, I'll be happy to send that to uh, Sarah. It won't be for a day or so because jo Sean's going to be get, doing some. Uh, follow up today and I want to hear what he has to say before we lock in January 28th. So right now it's it's not a date that's completely locked in um, because we just don't know if we have all the parties in alignment right now. So yes, absolutely. We'll get that information to Sarah. It probably won't be for a day or so. Do you have a tentative location? Yeah. Like just as we said, it's probably going to be, I mean, right now I think we're kind of leaning towards Cotner. Cotner between Olympic and uh, Santa Monica. If you drew, that's the street that hugs the freeway. If you're coming down up north on the 405 and you're getting off at Santa Monica, you're going and you just glance to your right. That's Cotner. Got it. And it's primarily south of I think it's Gates. I think it's more south of Gates because north of it, it's starting to transition into the exit for the for the 405. But 
And there's a lot there for us to, that we can be very helpful, very helpful. Yeah, and some of the people that we met today, they don't seem crazy to me or, um, you know, they were very appreciative, um, subdued. Um, they were uh, very um, happy to have Margaret pass out clothing. Um, and uh, pharmaceutical supplies. I think it's going to surprise a lot of us who are drive-bys and have never really paused and stopped to take a look. Yeah. Yeah, very good Good point, Chris. I have, so, Michael Newman, I have a couple, a question. Yes. Sure. Um, like a couple of people I talked to, and Chris, you kind of just alleviated it, and Steve with your 50 feet or whatever, but you know, some of them have had contacts in Westwood, and maybe those are more crazies because they're not living there, they're walking, but they feel they've been attacked. And then when it comes to cleaning, they're worried about needles and other things. Are there going to be any kind of sanitary guidelines that we can give someone, like what they're supposed to do if they come home? Of course, you shower or whatever, but I think that's the concern of some people. We, we had talked about having kind of an orientation, and I think that's a great idea, Mike, that we follow up on that and work with Sean to have maybe a Zoom orientation a day or so before the event, or maybe even, um, let's see now, that's the 26th. I think we're, we got Zoom that day. So maybe we just stay on the Zoom. We can, we'll work on that, Mike. I think you make a great point. Uh, there will be represent, there will be representatives from the organization there to kind of run, run uh, interference if by chance somebody gets you know um problematic and so if somebody gets problematic it's probably becomes problematic we will have somebody to inter intervene on our behalf so yeah, the people we met today seem very appreciative that's the word i i think that explains it very well yeah. they were appreciated that we were even thinking about them and appreciating that we were there and that we um that we're providing, not necessarily us, but West LA homeless at this point, providing services for them. Yeah, and we were given the uh, direct opinion that this is not an aggressive uh, homeless encampment area. As uh, they were pointing out, there's others that are uh, not too far away. And we were instructed that this is a safe environment uh, to proceed with our <laughs> it would be interesting to know maybe more about them over time why they are there and what they think about it and so forth mm -hmm. yeah one individual that, that um, Ben was talking to a young a young lady and and he, he started talking to her why is she homeless what 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 is what what's the circumstance? And I mean, do you want to be housed? And she says, oh, I most definitely do. I've been on the street for now three years and I, I want to get off the street. And so Ben immediately reached out to one of the caseworkers who was there. I think it was Diamond, the woman. woman and she came over and was starting to interview this woman. And, uh, you know, they can they can start working with these, ca these caseworkers or licensed caseworkers. And they have the they have at their disposal the resources that can work towards hopefully finding this person um, uh, some housing. These, these case workers job is to deal with the homeless who are, who are willing and want to get into, uh, want to get into a, a home facility to work with them. It's not an easy job because many of them will say they do, but when it comes down to, actuality they really don't or what they don't want to follow the rules whatever the case is it takes quite a while to work with a homeless person to get them really in the in the mood to really want to be housed right any other questions yes yeah, steve uh you'll be reaching out to aaron once we know if we're locked into a certain time Right. Yeah, we've had we've had discussions with Aaron um, through the through the Y. They have a, a volunteer program, and Aaron thinks that we may be able to get some volunteers who also who already volunteer at the Y to participate in this activity. So you yeah, will be 
Lupin and Aaron. Aaron's also our community service chair, so it kind of falls into his domain. So yeah, Aaron, hopefully we'll uh, be able to get us some volunteers as well. Okay. Well, thank you, Chris. Sure. A couple other announcements. Our board meeting will be at Tom and Margot's on Monday at 5.30. So if you haven't already RSVP'd, please do. And again, I want to talk about and ask if people are seriously considering um, participating at the district conference in the early part of May. So please let me know if you will be there. With that, um, Taya, yeah, Steve. Steve, you're muted. Uh, thank you, Chris. Just one other thing. The Sunday is the district brunch. Uh, District Governor Olivia has uh, has had these series of quarterly brunches instead of Tuesday morning uh, club meetings, uh, district, excuse me, district meetings. Uh, we have Sunday brunches. This one's at the Proud Bird. And we Chris is, is unfortunately unable to attend. We have a, we have a ticket that could be uh, that, that's available. So I'm going to be there. I know maybe others are too. I know Ben's going to be there as well. Marsha's going to be there. Who else is? Marsha. Oh, Marsha. Wonderful. So let's all sit together. <laughs> so if somebody would be interested in going, let me know and we can, uh, you know, we'll have a ticket for you this coming Sunday. It's from 1230 to 330 at the Proud Bird. And it's our quarterly district uh, uh, meeting. And uh, it, it, as a sign that it's very popular is that it's sold out. So if you want to go now, this is the only way you can go because otherwise all the tickets are sold. So anyway, so please let me know if you're interested in going this coming Sunday. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Uh, Tia, will you give me the screen? Okay, your co-host, you can share. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I am the speaker today. And uh, I thought that we would talk about Southeast Asia, uh, a place that uh, is near and dear to my heart. And at the same time, not a, as many people have been there uh, that can talk about it. So let me just give you a little introduction to Singapore. Some people may have described it as a playground for the rich. And it's true that this small city state does have a certain sheen of wealth. But Singapore offers more than just high-end shopping malls, luxury hotels, and fine dining. There's quite a bit to see. It's got an excellent transportation system. And some of the sites that I'm gonna show you, I think will uh, surprise and dazzle you. So I wanna start with the Botanic Gardens. Um, Singapore received its first UNESCO World Heritage nomination for its Botanical Gardens. And this is it as you walk in. So it's um, a beautiful wall. Uh, We're not seeing anything, by the way. I don't think you're sharing your screen. All right. So go down the screen share. Huh. Well, let me go back. And let me go back. No. Hmm. All right, I may need, I don't see anything that says screen sharing. It should be at the bottom of your Zoom call. 
I just have pictures on my screen. I don't have. Chris, if you put yes, your, you your cursor down, down, then you might down be able to see it. All the way to the bottom. It's a green button. Move your cursor down, it may appear. <coughs> oh. This is what happens when you're technology challenged. Huh. I had screen share before. Um, all right, so let me get out of this. All right, now I see share screen. Share. Did I do it? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's go. All right, what about now? We yeah, see we can, yeah. you we can see, see it. the pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Terrific. Anyway, this is the entrance into the botanical gardens. And you see this stunning wall. And um, it's quite uh, beautiful. And so I want to show you um, some of the pictures that you'll see. Uh, and uh, some of the plant life. Some beautiful flowers. Some unusual uh, plants. And they've got some enormous uh, trees there. And it's uh, quite a stunning uh, environment to walk in. It's, it's very large. And... Uh, you can see some monitor lizards that just sort of meander around. And they grow up to about nine feet. And uh, that was fun and a little alarming. Uh, you know, you have a, a vision of those Komodo dragons, but they're pretty harmless, these monitor lizards, as long as you give them a, a clean birth. So... Here are some orchids. And it's really something to see. Um, so this was one unusual uh, plant that I had never seen anything like this before. So it caught my attention. And then look at this. And then they had um, this one plant. And these were the size of cannonballs. I'd never seen anything like this. So next, I want to take you... Um, to an area, it's the gardens by the bay, and these are what they call super trees. And they get illuminated at night. There's a rose. And so you can see um, different ones. They're very large. And some of them have plants growing up on them. I want to show you what they look like a little bit later in the day. And this is, you've probably all heard about this one hotel. It's called the Marina Bay Sands. And it's a resort. It's a high-end luxury hotel with a mall, can, with a canyon, canal, 
running through it. Um, it's over 50 stories. Uh, the view up there is astounding, I've heard, but you got to pay to get up there, and we didn't do it. Um, it overlooks the Sky Park, overlooks, it's about a 250 acres of uh, gardens, which I'll show you in a moment. But this is something, it's absolutely gorgeous, and it's an architectural mar marvel. Um, so this is right in that one area in the backdrop, and I'll show you a few more pictures of it. So you're looking down, and you can see uh, more of the super trees and another uh, view from it right here. So then I want to take you into um, the gardens by the bay, and they have these two enormous domes, and um, they're spectacular. Um, So the Bay East Garden is perfect for enjoying plant life. And you feel like you've been transported because it's this dome of such magnitude. Um, you can get lost in it. Uh, the plant life and what you see, um, rather uh, stunning. So, I mean, this is a mature tree and look how tall it is. And um, they had a lot of wood sculptures, uh, beautiful. Um, look at that old gnarled tree and it's in a dome. So um, some statues. Um, this gentleman is, uh, who made these statues is very famous. And then I want to show you something like this. These were enormous and you couldn't walk by them without being in awe. So here's Rose again, looking at some zinnias. And, um, Then they have another dome that's a, a, for a rainforest. And look at this. This is right next door inside a dome. And look at the size of this. And so just to give you an idea, that's Rosa's sister and her husband. So they have um, different areas. For, this is more like a, a tropical rainforest. And um, really something to see. And some of the most beautiful orchids uh, you've seen anywhere. All different types. Okay, then I love architecture and I'd never seen anything like this. And this was an, um, an Indian temple. So I insisted that we had to go out and visit it. And uh, I think we were well rewarded. Um, so these are different uh, shots of it. You just don't see this here. So one of the big walking streaks, uh, streets is Haya Lane. And just give you an idea, a lot of restaurants, kind of fun. And then I uh, took us to a Greek restaurant for dinner. And if you like octopus, you would be in heaven. This was delicious. Then you can see what the super trees look like illuminated at night. They're very um, beautiful, all different colors. So purple, uh, an orange, red. It's quite a show that they put on in the evening, greens and blues.
And then when you are leaving and you go to the airport, and we flew to Hanoi, we'll go there next, they have a rainforest inside the airport. And if you've never seen anything like this, it's going to catch you off guard. Um, the amount of water circulating. Let me get it right. It's a 10 story high and they call it the Jewel uh, Gangji. It's not your ordinary transportation hub. It's got 300 shops. Uh, the most famous is the 40 meter high, um, they call it a rain vortex. It's an indoor waterfall surrounded by over 2000 trees. They have a cactus garden, a sunflower garden and a butterfly garden. This is all at the airport. And it's got a six meter grotto waterfall and plenty of plants. Um, this is something that if you fly into Singapore, I would highly recommend that you have an opportunity to see this. Okay. Okay, from there we went to Hanoi. And this is the Ho Chi Minh uh, Mausoleum. And he's laid to rest there. And uh, we walked by and paid our respects. It's, um, it's an impressive uh, the Royal Palace uh, uh, in the country, different areas of it. Uh, these were his vehicles. All right, a few more street scenes that I thought were particularly interesting. Look at the dragon fruit here. And just to give you an, an impression of what the transportation is like, it's motorcycles. You don't see that many cars, even though there are cars. Um. I had an unusual experience and we went to this cafe. That was the original cafe uh, that opened up in 1946. And for those of you who have never heard of an egg uh, cafe, you're about uh, coffee, you're about to uh, see one. Um, this is an egg coffee and it's coffee with the, the yolk um, whipped and then put on top. Um, I don't eat eggs. I'm not quite sure why I don't, but I get nauseous with scrambled eggs. So um, my wife and my brother-in-law and sister-in-law had never seen me eat anything associated with an egg. But as we walked into this uh, cafe, everybody... Um, as we went upstairs, and there's tables as you go in and out, is slurping up this uh, delicacy. And so I forced myself into trying it, as you can see. That's Rose's sister, Karen. And uh, if you've never had one, I think that you will be pleasantly surprised. It's actually quite good. And uh, again, uh, nobody could uh, uh, truly understand how all that happened. <laughs> okay, next I'm going to take us uh, to Paradise uh, Cave. And this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's out in the country. Uh, we flew from Hanoi. We went back from Anlan Bay to Hanoi and then flew uh, to this area. 
And this is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And these are some of the stalactites and the stalagmites that you will see. It's extraordinary. And um, I sought this out because I like caves. And um, anytime you see a UNESCO World Heritage Site that um, we go out of our way not to miss it. So you can see something uh, such as this. Uh, this one, if you have an imagination, look like a woolly mammoth. You can see the hind and then going up. So, uh, and these are enormous. The The ceiling must have been 100 feet. Um, and uh, what I'd like to share with you is when we went, it was February of 2020. And nobody from China or Korea were allowed to go into Vietnam because of the pandemic. So normally there's maybe up to a thousand people going through this cave. When we went there, I don't know if there were 25 people for the entire time we were there. So it was an even uh, more fortuitous experience for us to visit it. These are some more pictures. Just most unusual formations. And then look at something like this. So, and it's cooler there than it is outside, but not, as you can see, we're dressed uh, for summer weather. Um, but I, this was one of the highlights of our trip. And um, so let's go from here. Oh, look at this picture. I mean, have you ever seen anything like this? So these are uh, some of the boats that take you into uh, one of the caves. And so we went into this cave after we left Paradise Cave. And this is what we saw in this cave. And yeah, here's the boat that we were on, as you can see. All right, next, I want to briefly take you into one of the caves. Um, and here you can see I'm about to enter. And these were the underground cities that were people lived uh, during the Vietnam War. And uh, these cities, incredible. Uh, they could home house up to 30 to... 60,000 people. Um, where where uh, are you now, Chris? In the center of Vietnam. Okay, these are underground caves. This is down by uh, Hoi An and Hue. So we went through the uh, those caves and it was fascinating. Um, next... I'm going to take us, oh God, I'm just scratching the surface. There's so much more uh, to share. Um, run down to, uh, in uh, Hawaii, I went to a tailor have some custom clothes made and there's four shirts uh bolts of cotton and to this day i had a couple of suits four shirts got some shirts and suits for my son and the pandemic hit and i've never worn them in um these are more markets and they're really incredible to see 
Um, so butcher, um, more vegetables, and we're working our way south. Um, I think this one I wanted to show you. This is not a painting. It's an embroidery. And uh, we stumbled upon this uh, shop and the artwork there was something I'd never seen before. And this one right here, uh, I ended up bringing home. So it's in our dining room today. Um, I guess I'm going to conclude in Saigon. We're not going to get to um, see him reap. But we did something that was unusual. Oh, and if you want to know what the mode of transportation is, you can see it right here. Um, in Saigon, we uh, arranged for uh, a tour by these uh, young ladies uh, that took us around. Uh, we went to five different eating areas. They picked us up at 4.30 and dropped us back at 9.30 at night. And it was the, high gone, uh, the, the highlight of Saigon. Um, they took us to the flower mart. You can see them here. Um, and, you know, here we are at one of our stops. And so, again, to five different uh, restaurants. You can just give you an idea of the food. And this was a blast. Here I am. That's Steve, and that's Karen, and I'm behind them. And I said, turn around, and we took a picture. There's no real traffic lights in um, <laughs> in Saigon. So everybody just sort of merges, and you don't quite understand how there's not an accident. But somehow people work, and uh, we had protection. He and another gentleman went around with us to make sure everything was fine uh, uh, or to keep an eye on Steve. Just kidding. Uh, but it was, we had a blast. It was really uh, one of the highlights of the trip. And then they teased us at the end. They said, all right, we'll let you uh, uh, drive. And there's no way that any of us wanted to take that seriously. All right. I now uh, I know we're out of time, so I'll stop. But maybe uh, another time, if everybody's interested in uh, Siem Reap, I can show you what some of the temples look like because these are extraordinary and um, they're just breathtaking. So I will stop now. If anybody has any quick questions, I'll be glad to address it. Otherwise, I will say we are dismissed until next week. Thank you. Good question. Yes, Gordon. Next week, where is the meeting? I believe it's going to be at Umberto's. It is. Yes. Okay. Just wanted to clarify. Thanks. Okay. Marsha? Where's Umberto's? <laughs> I'll tell you when we get together on Monday. Okay. Okay. But it's right by the freeway um, north of Sunset Boulevard. Sunset and Moraga. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Sepulveda. Sepulveda and Moraga. That's I'm right. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Chris. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. That was fascinating. Oh, you're welcome. Um, it's fun to relive uh, your trips, and uh, this was an opportunity, too. <laughs>